Hi, my name is Elias Serjan and this is an eSecure Data video report. The question today is, what is IPv6 and how does it affect you? If you've got a website or web business operating on IPv4, you already know that IPv6 is coming and you'll need to be prepared for it. In this video, we'll explain what IPv6 is, how it fits into current internet designs, and what needs to be done to prepare for its adoption. IPv6 is a new and improved internet protocol that is intended to replace IPv4, which is the current internet protocol. IPv6 is designed to accommodate the continued growth of the internet by allowing for vastly increased address space. Work on IPv6 started in the 1990s, and the standard was completed in 1998. IPv6 addresses are four times as long as IPv4 addresses. So we move from an internet with 4.3 billion addresses using IPv4 to two to the power of 128 addresses using IPv6. That number is like a three with 38 zeros following it. In simple terms, IPv6 is a separate internet that runs on the same hardware and wiring as the current IPv4 internet. The protocols are different, however, and IPv6 cannot naturally talk to IPv4 or vice versa without some additional work. We'll get to those options in a few moments. IPv4 is an internet protocol that forms the basis of the current internet. It was created in 1981, and the 4.3 billion addresses available under that protocol are almost all allocated. This is the primary driving issue leading us to move away from IPv4. At this stage, smaller and smaller blocks of addresses are available for allocation. At the same time, with a huge installed base, essentially the entire existing internet, IPv4 will not disappear anytime soon. Allocations of IPv4 addresses started to dry up in early 2011 when the last allocation by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, the IANA, was given to AFRINIC, the African Internet Authority. Since then, regional sub-authorities have been phasing down their allocations as they run out of numbers to assign. Today, in excess of 95% of the addresses are assigned. IPv6 is native to most operating systems today, but internet providers generally default to providing only IPv4 functionality to clients. Despite this, Google reports that over 3.5% of its searches now take place over IPv6, and that number is growing exponentially. Aside from the challenges posed by slow adoption by internet providers, IPv6 also faces some challenges from incomplete implementations on some operating systems. For example, Android is not yet supporting a few functions, such as DHCPv6, and NDRDNSS. And Windows Phone 7.5 did not support IPv6 at all. Windows Phone 8 does, however. IPv6 has much longer addresses than IPv4. Accordingly, there are a few tricks to keep them manageable. IPv6 uses eight hexadecimal groups of four. So a basic address could look like this. A couple of shortcuts. First, you can also drop leading zeros in any block of four. Second, you can compress groups of contiguous zeros in one spot only by putting two colons together. So you could change the former address to this. There are also several reserved address ranges. Addresses beginning with FE80 are local unicast addresses. Addresses beginning with FF01 to FF08 are multicast addresses. Private network addresses are reserved to this range. The loopback address is colon colon 1. Generally, the first 
48 bits are the network prefix. The next 16 are the subnet ID, and the last 64 are the interface identifier, also known as the device identifier. One of the challenges faced under IPv4 is address assignment. Under IPv4, network administrators solve this problem with protocols such as DHCP, which assign IP addresses to new devices when they're plugged into a network. This relies on a server somewhere on the network which has a pool of available IP addresses that it can assign to all the devices on that network. IPv6 has a similar protocol called DHCPv6, which relies on a server with a pool of available addresses. But it also has auto configuration capability to allow devices to configure themselves on the network without any server side configuration at all. This removes the need for configuration and maintenance of DHCP services. Under IPv4, once addresses are assigned, there is no easy way to change them without configuring each device manually. This can pose a challenge to network administrators as needs and designs change. Under IPv6, network administrators can renumber and reassign segments of networks by setting expiration times on network prefixes, which forces periodic auto configurations. They can then set new prefixes for the devices to use during their next auto configuration. And devices can maintain both old and new addresses for a limited period of overlap. IPv6 and IPv4 can both run on the same physical network at the same time. But these two networks don't talk to each other without additional work. Since the current internet is overwhelmingly IPv4, it is essential for any IPv6 migration to incorporate some mechanism to communicate with the existing IPv4 internet. NAT64 is a commonly used protocol for making IPv4 internet available to devices on the IPv6 internet. This is done by implementing a single device on the IPv6 network that does NAT, or Network Address Translation, to the IPv4 internet. Devices on the IPv6 network have only IPv6 addresses, but their traffic is translated to IPv4 as needed to go out to that network and then retranslate it back to IPv6 when it returns. On a dual stack network, each device on the network has software implemented that lets it communicate in either IPv4 or IPv6, and each device on the network is assigned both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Dual stack is currently the more common approach, as it allows networks to migrate slowly to IPv6 in a controlled manner. Many people are concerned about the security challenges posed by IPv6, mainly because it's so new that nobody is really sure what those challenges will be. We know that IPv6 improves security in some primary ways. The IPv6 network, rather than being target rich, like the IPv4 network, is very sparsely populated, with billions of unused addresses for every utilized address. This makes life more complicated for automated hunting programs. Some estimates suggest that using current hunting techniques, it would take hundreds of years to even find a potential target in IPv6. And this is before you could even begin to explore vulnerabilities on that target. IPv6 also has IPsec security built in natively, rather than being an add-on as it is under IPv4. IPv6 is here and growing. eSecure Data has taken steps to ensure that our clients are positioned to run IPv6 while retaining full IPv4 functionality. 
We are implementing both NAT64 and dual stack to make the transition seamless. And our staff is trained and ready to assist in migrating sites to IPv6. If you're interested in a secure hosting environment with IPv6 already implemented, take a look at the eSecure Data website at www.esecuredata.ca. Thank you for your valuable time and consideration. This has been an eSecure Data video report.